This episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast is brought to you by Nomadicare. Now, personally, I love Nomadicare, I've used Nomadicare, and I recommend the company to all new travelers. What Nomadicare does is it takes the fear out of getting set up with a bad recruiter, which is the biggest fear that you have jumping into this journey. So they sit down, they interview recruiters, they vet them, get them on a list, and then provide them to you as a free service, as a free recruiter matchmaking service in order to get you started on your journey. Now, usually you only get two recruiters going through Nomadicare, but being a listener of the show, you can get three. So this is how it's going to work. You go to nomadicare.com slash Dylan. You will get set up with three recruiters to be on your dream team, as well as a guide to get you started on your journey. The second sponsor of the show is TravCon, the Travelers Conference. I'm super excited to announce them as a sponsor of the show. TravCon was there for me before I got started as a medical nomad, and now I'm actually involved with the planning of the event. So super aligned, super congruent. I've been promoting them before they're even a sponsor, and so I'm excited to have them on. So there are three main reasons that you should go to TravCon this year. Number one, value. This is the cheapest conference to go to as a medical professional. And also the only place that I've ever felt like royalty when you're walking in and all these staffing agencies and all these recruiters want to talk to you and you're bumping elbows with these travelers and they're interested about your story, about where you're coming from and what you're doing. And it's overall just a really good feel good event. Number two is education and growth. So this conference was founded on the realization that there's a lot to know to be a medical traveler, to be a medical nomad. And so this is where you go to get the most updated tax information, This is where you go for those really niche specific questions on what's it like to travel in an RV and what's it like to travel to Hawaii. And then third, community. This is where a lot of my traveler friends that are very near and dear to my heart right now, this is where we met. So this is where the relationship sparked. It's also one of the only places that you get to go to and see the leaders and meet the leaders of the industry, both on the staffing agency side and on the traveler side, and also get to meet your recruiters face to face that you've been working with. So TravCon is always in September every year. TravCon is also always in Las Vegas. The link is going to be in the show notes for you to get your ticket. I'll be at TravCon. All my friends will be at TravCon. I hope to see you there. Hey, Nomads, this is Dylan coming at you from Colorado. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the New Medical Nomads podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dylan Callier, and today we are talking about what happens, what to do when you get a speeding ticket in a state away from home or you're away from home, you get a speeding ticket. Uh, Kind of my story, I guess a little bit on on my bad boy image of going fast (laughs) and um, kind of what to do in those situations. Uh, So yes, I got a speeding ticket on this contract. Uh, I'll give a little bit of background to it and I'll give a little bit of background of what I've done in the past and kind of what what I found out going, going through this process because um, it was very different taking care of this ticket compared to what I used to do when I was in Missouri. So my literally my second day of the contract here, had my orientation day the first day. I'm driving to about 30 minutes south of where I'm staying and meeting for a case conference for home health. And it's the first time I'm ever driving on this road. I'm kind of just going with traffic. And I noticed that traffic starts slowing down really fast. It was just a, kind of a, a subconscious thought. And I was like, oh, and so just something I noticed and I didn't really like pick it up right away. And so I was just kind of <laughs> blasting past some of these people. And uh, all of a sudden I saw a police officer coming the, the opposite direction on the, uh, the highway. And I slowed down just instinctively, always hit the brake, <laughs> got that oh-ish moment. And he turned around directly. And I was like, oh, I bet, I bet it, I'm going a little fast here. So um, the area that I was clocked at. You're going down the highway. It goes from a 65 very quickly to a 55, very quickly to a 45, because you're coming up on this very small town uh, that has a a four-way red light. And then it picks up from 45 to 55 to 65 on the other side. So um, (laughs) it isn't 
uncommon to find a police officer sitting there waiting for persons to maybe, I don't know, miss that speed limit sign that changed. Um, Luckily, I saw the second one, the 45, but I did not see the change down to the 55. Um, So I was pulled over. Probably the most polite police officer I've ever dealt with, ever ever got to uh, work with, I suppose. Um, And everything was quick. He was pretty pretty fast with everything, got the ticket, um, explained everything, and then off on my way. So previously, this was like my first first ticket in, I don't know how long. I don't think I've gotten one since I was in high school or first couple of years in, in undergraduate school. And what I did then was that there was a, when I was back in Missouri, back in St. Louis, there was a group that you could call and they would literally take care of that ticket for you. So um, I made a couple posts um, looking for maybe some a legal representative that could help me out with this. Um, for those that reached out and said, just drive slower and that would solve the issue. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the, the SAS, <laughs> but uh, that didn't help me. <laughs> and so got, got some, some recommendations of some, some legal persons to help me out. Uh, basically the reason I was so concerned, oh, I got some questions on why, why don't you just pay the ticket? And it's like, well, I am paying the ticket, but the problem with this, with a moving violation or a ticket like that is that it will go on your license or it will go on your record. And then your car insurance can increase their rates. So the very first thing I did was call my insurance and I'm like, Hey, um, may or may not have gotten a speeding ticket trying to decide if I should go ahead and plead guilty and just take the fine or should I fight against it? and um, maybe, you know, appear in court, do all these steps, um, if it was worth it, if my insurance was going to go up. Um, Unfortunately, they couldn't tell me (laughs) if or how much my rates were going to go up, which I thought was ridiculous because you know that it's just a spreadsheet or it's just a log and all they have to do is enter in the numbers and they push a button, um, enter, it comes out and that's your rate. Um, so I was, I was pretty frustrated, but I, I was pretty confident that it was going to go up if I didn't take care of it. So the next thing I did is what I used to do in Missouri, St. Louis, asked for recommendations of legal representatives. I'm in a kind of a smaller area, so there really wasn't too many that I could go to. And they, oh my goodness, I, I was calling these places up and um, I spoke to the, you know, the, the clerk, the representative, whoever um, that answers the phones. And they were like, oh, well, the hourly fee is like $120 or we can do a half hour for $60 just to see if it's a good fit. And that was just, you know, (laughs) that was just to find out if they could help me, um, not even, you know, take care of the the ticket for me. And um, when I was in St. Louis, it was like, I don't know, $40, $65, something like that. Something pretty, pretty nominal, pretty cheap um, in order just for them to take it down from a moving violation to a non-moving violation or where they remove the points off of your license and therefore your insurance doesn't see it. Called around, couldn't find anything. Um, luckily, after I posted online, some people reached out and said, hey, um, you might be able to take a class. And so this was, um, I'd heard of driving school before, I just didn't know how it worked. I always thought it was for like some, some big offenses, like you got into a car accident or something like that. So um, I ended up calling the number on the ticket and I spoke with a really nice lady um, who runs the police department there or doesn't run the police department, um, I guess is maybe an operator or something like that. And so she walked me through it and said, so you have um, the amount of points on your license is this much. If you and some of this information was on the ticket itself. So I knew that if I was going to pay within like the first two weeks, um, it was going to knock um, the majority of my points down to just one point on my license. Um, So she explained that if you pay it early, you get those points knocked off, you plead guilty, it goes down to one point. Um, The state of Colorado uh, doesn't report points that are one or less. They only report points two insurances that are two or greater. However, your option is to take a driver's education class. After you take this driver's course, this driver's school education thing, then you would lose that last point 
off of, off of your record, off of the licensure. And so I wanted to go with that route just because I didn't want any problems <laughs> with this. I don't, I don't want my insurance increasing. I don't know how long it would take to decrease that. Um, if it, something like that were to happen, if I were to plead guilty to this ticket. So ended up paying the fine. And then it was a very cheap, you know, like $50, something like that, um, in order to take this, this driver's education course. Um, from what I hear, most are online now. So if you're driving through an area, say you're going from one contract to the next, maybe it's like the middle point and you get this, you know, speeding ticket or something like that, you still might be able to do this, um, this option to where you're able to go online, you can attend and you can get that last point taken off. Um, the other stipulation is that you can't get a ticket or violation within the next six months or, you know, whatever the laws is for that area. So I can't get another ticket from that small county police department for the next six months. Otherwise it voids um, that driver's education course that I took in the point come back. The point comes back. That's what I'm going to say. But if you're driving through, um, you know, just kind of driving through an area and you get this ticket, if it's online, you can still do it. Um, this particular area, they don't have an online option. So it was an in-person so I had to wait maybe about a month and then um, go in and, and take this, this driver's education course. So that's the, um, that's the tactical parts of it. If you were listening to this and you're like, I just got a ticket, I don't know what to do. That's, those, those are the options. So you, can, you don't need a lawyer. You don't need what I used to do in Missouri you know, when I was in high school or undergrad of calling somebody to get it reduced, um, get that ticket reduced, get those points reduced. Um, you can do it on your own most likely. So go ahead and call the number on the ticket and just ask them, Hey, I um, was driving through just wondering if there's any options for me. This is my first offense in a while. It's my first offense with you guys. Just wondering if there's anything that I can do in order to make sure that my insurance rates don't go up. Um, you'll still have to pay the fine. So if you're going to be <laughs> frictional and aggressive with them and, you know, trying to deny um, the, the ticket for that you got, that's not, that's not what this route is about. That would actually be a appearance in court. Um, but if you're just super polite with them, they're probably going to give you uh, an option to take care of that because they understand, especially my option where it's, it's a pretty well-known, um, stakeout spot for, for that small, um, police department. Um, Everything was pretty was pretty lighthearted <laughs> for all those conversations, um, but yeah. So I went to this this driver's education course, and there was quite a few people there. Actually, I was very surprised. I thought it was going to be like me and two others, and there was probably twenty five of us there um, for such a small such a small area. And you go in. And I actually, I did learn a few things. Um, it wasn't like when I was on the phone with the lady talking about it, she's like, and we, I told her I was a traveling physical therapist. This is literally my second day coming through, you know, gave, gave the whole, um, <laughs> the, the whole sob story that I tried to get to the officer that he, he didn't bite. Um, you know, I tried just, you know, crying real hard, you know, it seems to work for my sister, but, uh, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, that, that's totally totally a fib by the way. Um, so, you know, told her that I was, you know, a healthcare practitioner. She's like, well, um, this test is really easy. Um, pretty much you just have to show up. If you don't pass the test, you probably shouldn't be taking care of people. And so she's, she's pretty witty herself and I enjoyed it. Um, so show up and, but I did, I did learn, uh, learn a few things. And so we're sitting there in class. There's, um, I noticed some other <clears throat> maybe some healthcare pra practitioners. I heard the word patient or something like that on the side. So it made me feel a little bit better. And you go in, these, there's these two guys and um, they pr pretty much just talk about what um, they think is important for, for that area. So some of the areas that they hit on um, obviously was like speeding. Um, they really hit on roundabouts. I think they had just had um, a couple roundabouts put in um, about, how to come on that you need to use your blinker coming off um how don't go the wrong way <laughs> simple things like that um they had a lot of rules on bicycles and whether or not they were pedestrian or if they were supposed to be vehicle and for this area they can act as both um but if they are acting as a pedestrian and doing like a crosswalk they have to get off the bike and walk it across so that that was interesting to me um and i, I never really knew what to do because um the 
Missouri laws, you know, back home, the rules are so much different for, for bicyclists than they are here, you know, closer to the West coast. And so, um, I, I learned a little bit, a little bit on that piece and, um, you know, just some other easy things I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, vehicle maintenance there, they actually had some, some interesting points on like, <laughs> um, human physiology. So it takes about three, three quarters of a second for you to perceive something in the road. And then about three quarters of a second for you to even, you know, act and start applying the brake. And so they broke that down into, so if you're going 70 miles an hour, blah, 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 it's going to be about 34 feet before you can even respond to something right there. And then they said, well, if you're applying the brake and you're going this fast, it's going to take you this amount of time. So if a deer pops out in front of you, if you're going that fast, if they're within 70 feet, there's no, there's no way around it. You're going to hit that, hit that deer, hit whatever it might be in front of you. Um, so that was really, that was really good. And they really hit on texting and driving, um, which I thought was, was very excellent. But uh, the more comical thing was, it was almost to the point where I'm, I'm thinking they might've planted this guy. I know they didn't, but it was just, Oh, you get some, um, you, you get a wide variety of persons in, in the room. And one of these individuals was a very older gentleman and he just, <clears throat> they would ask if there's any questions and he would raise his hand and then he would tell a story. And so they kept calling on him and every time he would get called on, he would go into this long story uh, to where you're just like, Oh my gosh, I never want to get another ticket again. If this is how it is. Um, and it, it was just on and on and on. And um, probably the most, the one I was just losing it on, I was trying not to laugh. I was trying not to laugh. They were talking about um, DUIs and, um, intoxicated while driving. They brought up marijuana because that's kind of a newer thing. And um, (laughs) he raises his hand and they're like, yes. And he's like, well, you know, back in the day when we were riding on horse and buggy (laughs) and he goes into getting DUIs way back, I don't know how long ago, old as dirt, this guy. Okay. Got a very, um, very manly beard. He totally looked like a mountain man. And uh, talking about horse and buggy days and getting tickets from officers back when everybody was on these horses riding around. And, uh, oh, man, I'm just sitting there trying not to trying not to laugh. They're, everybody's getting, like, so frustrated. And, yes, just very, very funny. But um, <laughs> it, it was very... It, it was almost like a unintended punishment <laughs> of listening to all these stories. But um, yeah, so I took the class, passed the class um, and that's pretty much it. So, you know, I had to pay the ticket. I had to pay a fee for the class. Um, the class maybe took two hours. Um, would have been much simpler if it was online. Um, however, that wasn't an option. So if you are listening to this, if you got a speeding ticket or um, you're just listening to this in case um, you do get a speeding ticket if you have a tendency of maybe not seeing those um, speed limits and uh, you go a little bit quicker than traffic um, for for some times on your long, long um, road trips. If you get the ticket and you're not going to, you know, fight it, go to court, whatever, um, you don't need, <clears throat> most likely won't need legal representation because that was, oh my gosh, it was going to be so much like um, I at least not even talking about the, you know, 120 for the, for the phone. I bet just like $300 for, you know, somebody to actually show up in court, plead my case, blah, 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 blah. Um, so you don't, you don't need a, somebody to represent you legally. Just call the number on the ticket, ask if there's anything you can do, um, you know, that you're okay with the ticket. You want to go ahead and pay the fine that if there's anything you can do for those points, um, cause you don't want your insurance rates to go up cause you are a very good driver and this is your you know, first offense in a while, or this is your first offense, um, in this area. And, um, <clears throat> they probably have an option for you. So that will take some time. Um, you know, the class was two hours for me. If it's an in-person, if you're actually, you know, there at the contract when you got the ticket, um, that's an option. Or if you're driving to that next contract, and it would have been a bummer if I was, you know, driving through this area, got the ticket, and then that wouldn't have been an option for me because they only have in-person classes. 
so that part not really sure you'll have to dive in on your own if you're if you're stuck there but if you're driving through an area still call because from what i hear most of them are online that you can take um, i do believe it's uh you, you'll probably have a scheduled time that you have to go uh, i don't think it's just like a you know online ceu course that you can just kind of take whenever but uh yeah that is uh my stories of the first speeding ticket that i've gotten in quite some time um, I've gotten quite a few parking tickets since since traveling, and mostly in California. They're just brutal out there. Um, which, by the way, if you're ever looking for a parking spot, um, Spot Hero is a great phone app. Um, I've used it a few times when flying away um, for maybe conferences or going back home for like four days for a wedding or something. And it's so much cheaper to do that rather than pay for the parking lot at the airport. Usually they're a little bit further away and they have a shuttle that takes you back and forth to it. Um, I've also done it for a couple nights at a hotel. Um, maybe the hotel was outrageous for, you know, $60 a night or something like that. And just a few blocks away, Spot Hero has um, something on the app that would only be $5, $15 a night um, instead. So yeah, Spot Hero, um, that is an app that I've used for parking um, if you do start getting more parking tickets out, um, especially on the West Coast, I'm sure the East Coast isn't any better, but man, in the Midwest, we just don't care. You just kind of, <laughs> you just kind of park wherever, just avoid the handicap signs. But uh, that is it for, for my, uh, <laughs> my story on speeding tickets. Um, if you are looking for the next episode of the podcast, we always formally announce them on the Facebook page. Um, new medical nomads podcast if you want early access to the episodes um, go ahead and subscribe to youtube go ahead and subscribe to itunes spotify um, your favorite podcast app um, we will probably be on there if we're not um, let me know and i will make sure to get on there um, and of course um, any type of interaction um, the shares the likes the hearts the winky faces all of that helps more people see um, see this content um, it allows us to help more more travelers out there, more nomads, which is the whole point of this show. So thank you so much, guys. I definitely appreciate um, your time. I hope this is helpful for you out there who was kind of may, might be stuck in a pickle like I was <laughs> um, for that speeding ticket. But um, everybody, I uh, hope your adventures are going well. I hope your uh, current contracts or if you're gearing up, ready to go for, for your first ever contract. So excited for you. But everybody have safe adventures and everybody have safe travels.